All right, check, check, radio check. Foremost, I want to, if you're, uh, you know, wondering, um, maybe you're on LinkedIn, maybe you watch virtually. You know, in the past, we had a, and, um, you know, Kate was out last week, about two weeks ago. Uh, long story short, my LinkedIn was hacked. And all of a sudden, uh, I went in um, to look at it, and it was all in Chinese. And, you know, I thought maybe it was just on one device. Well, it turns out the actual account was hacked, and then they deleted everything. And then uh, from there, um, you know, we have since, you know, double authentication going back in. We're rebuilding it. But I want to apologize if in the past you uh, you tried to watch um, virtually on uh, LinkedIn and we had a technical issue. So, you know, um, hackers are out there, they're good. Um, you know, fortunately we have enough uh, redundant securities. I can't prevent them from hacking a page, uh, but we did go in and, uh, you know, get it corrected, contacted LinkedIn. So, you know, that just, uh, you know, we'll probably have another to topic here shortly about, uh, you know, security, um, these hackers, uh, Caitlin sent me after this happened. She was so frustrated because she literally, they deleted everything, right? And post, uh, uh, put a picture of this this lady who is a fashion designer and it's all in Chinese and I can't read Chinese. And I turned around and I had to go to a Facebook to figure out even how to convert it back to English uh, I'm sorry, YouTube video to figure out how to convert it back to English so that I could at least, uh, um, you know, go in and see what, if anything, needed to be changed. So we have, I think, semi-rebuilt it. Um, and again, uh, you know, I apologize, but I will encourage everybody, start thinking about um, double redundant systems because Caitlin sent me this uh, sort of, you know, snippet of information, how quickly a hacker can literally hack your password now. And so it is, it's mind blowing. I mean, seconds, minutes, uh, you know, depending on the complexity of your password, it's, it really is pretty, you know, uh, uh, all things being aside, it's, it's actually impressive. They're probably using automation and technology to sort of, you know, the things of movies of old, how quickly they can unlock a, a password. Well, that has become reality. So that double redundant system for them to send you a passcode or whatever, those things are, are in place for a reason. And I would encourage you uh, to follow suit. So anyway, without further ado, I also want to say that we did not, we have just been covered up. It was uh, coming off tax season. I've just been running. Um, things are, 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 I'm busy, but, but it's good. I, we did our last uh, social security, our first social security last week, last Saturday. I got another one coming up this Saturday. We'll talk about that. Um, but just preparation, just all these things, balls in the air, things are good. So we're really, really running hard, but we did not do a uh, February market update. So today uh, we will be going through both. I'm going to go through February really, really fast. I'm not going to go month to date. I'm going to go year to date and then, or I'm sorry, uh, um, uh, month to date and then year to date uh, real quickly. And then we'll go from there. And then from uh, then I'll, I'll go a little bit slower in, in March, but you'll see some things that I think are, are starting to become noticeable. So uh, March, which remember March hindsight is for February. So this is the, the month to date on equities. I'm not going to spend time on that because really, let's just see how February turned out. And it turned out that the S&P was up about uh, six, almost seven percent. And then the next one is commodities, right? So, so equities in general, since the beginning of the year, have done pretty well. The only laggard seemed to me to be real estate, right? So real estate continues to get pummeled, uh, specifically commercial real estate. And I, I hear a lot of the talking heads have concerns, you know, on a go forward, right? Um, that that will be challenging. And I think we will see, uh, you know, um, headwinds in that arena, but... Um, I don't have a crystal ball, but I, I I wanted to bring us to the chart. Hey, you know, we had a green line. Things were, were still on an upward trend. So, you know, the equities, okay, positive news. Then we look at income for the month. I'm going to blow by this. And now we look at income for year to date on February. And the green, the dark green is high yield munis. And if you remember my conversations in the past, 
you know, high yield typically is another word for junk. And if you're looking and you have a portfolio, you're just entering into retirement, you need fixed income, you know, a lot of these areas are under pressure and they're actually negative returns. And, and you know, you look down here and you see even uh, the treasury. So this was all February data. And the last thing is a recession probability. There, the, Here we have a red line on the bonds, right? So that just means we may see, whereas before I was saying, hey, listen, you had a little bit of a green light, right? Uh, uh, bonds don't like rising interest rates. The Fed had raised rates. You know, there's talk at the beginning of the year that the Fed was going to raise it seven times. But, you know, they seem to have taken their foot off the gas. Inflation, they're, they're constantly monitoring. And so if inflation continues to put pressure on, we may not see a rate cut until the end of the year. But the, but the markets seem to have built that in, right? So they're resilient things. So we had a, a little bit of pressure the last week. But overall, I think, um, you know, uh, February uh, was good. And we'll, and we'll continue to see what uh, March and April look like. <laughs> but the recession probability in a tool, uh, we're still at above 50%. So, you know, it's it's on our radar, right? Sky's not falling, but we have a lot of uncertainty in the world. And again, that was a rear view mirror look of February. So now we're going to go April, which is a rear view mirror look of March. And, you know, again, the month, I'll slow down a little bit here. Um, you know, a month does not a market make, but where was commodities and why did this happen? Well, to me, you know, commodities, this is heavily uh, um, uh, weighted to uh, oil, right? And, it, you know, uh, uh, Iran attacked Israel, Israel attacked Iran, it spooks the market, causes uh, oil prices to go up. So that is not unexpected. And that's why I think you see for the whole month, you know, uh, commodities have started a little bit of a rebound. But look at that, uh, the, the dark green at the top, the S&P has still shaken off a lot of the news out there. So the, the markets, the, the one area that I think um, may be surprising and will continue, I, I think small caps, uh, this, this gold, uh, you know, sort of uh, orange um, color here. You know, I think, um, you know, uh, small caps in, in the private sector will um, I think be resilient and, you know, depending on inflation, if we can get some cooling inflation, if we can keep uh, the small business owners moving, I think overall it's not too bad, but also real estate continued to be under pressure. So, you know, that's the year, but here's the thing that I thought I, I, I found interesting. We now have the triple cross, right? All three of the, uh, uh, of the indicators have now said equities may be under downward pressure. And you can see almost every time that there's a red line that we can have, but sometimes it's real short. So if you look in here, you know where my arrow is, if you can see that it's a thin band. So it, it started down, but then it bounced back. I don't know what the future is going to hold. You know, you, ha you ask a hundred people, their opinions, uh, the, the economists, and they're going to give you a hundred different answers. But this is a technical indicator. And it's just saying, hey, we may start to feel headwinds on some of these stocks and holdings. And this is, again, I believe portfolios should have equity. I think you need to be diversified and you need to be in different sectors, not just companies, but sectors. So, you know, part of your planning, depending on what you're doing and where you are in your stage of your life, we can discuss this. But there is, this is not, hey, we're not moving money, um, uh, you know, to move money. We're moving money because we have strategies. We're moving money because we're saying, hey, if it were me, this is what I would do. Knowing what I do, and if you're nervous about the market, if you're concerned about global risk, political risk, uh, you know, um, inflation, right? Just any of the types of risks that typically are associated with, um, you know, the stock market, you know, right now I am seeing some really high rates on guaranteed fixed products, right? So they're worth looking into if you want to take risk off the table and uh, sort of sit on the sidelines or do something two year. And that's one of the things that maybe I'm going to do a call here in the future is what's interesting is that the short term uh, bonds are paying higher than the longer term bonds. And that's where, you know, some of the strategies when we're, when we're talking to clients, right, we're like, hey, why would I lock my money up at seven years at a lower rate 
than I would at two years or three years at this higher rate. Why would I do that? And the reason is, is because uh, we, we, it's reinvestment risk. So if, if the market in the bottom falls out on some of these holdings and, and we start to see that, uh, you know, right now the yields uh, on 10 year treasuries um, continue to maybe start to, to, to be pushed down, get, uh, get uh, additional pressure to keep these low or even go lower. Why not hold their feet to the fire, some of these companies uh, to give us guaranteed rates for a period of time? It doesn't need to be everything, but there are strategies that you can do to lock in guaranteed rates um, similar to CDs, but they have tax advantages. So if you'd like to learn more, let me know. We'll talk about that. Now, so income uh, markets for, again, for the month, um, not stellar, right, compared to last year. But then when we look year to date, we're still under pressure, right? And again, the the, the high yield bond. So it just, it's human nature. When people have portfolios where they need income, what tends to happen, people will gravitate to the areas where they can get above average returns. And that would be in the field right now. The only bond holdings that will do that are high yield muni bonds. But again, high yield is a substitute for junk. You're not going to get above average rate of returns without above average risk. And so in this holding here, uh, part of the strategies that we like to use to sort of augment this is uh, you know, structured notes. So something that we can do, I think, with a degree of certainty, they've proven to be very, uh, um, you know, uh, stable, um, but they're not guaranteed. Uh, so, so at the end of the day, you know, depending on what you're looking for, do you need guarantees? Do you need income? Do you, do you want to hold principal in your portfolio? Whatever these questions are that are unique to you specifically, um, you should really uh, make a time, uh, get on our calendar, have a conversation and say, hey, Am I allocated all right? Should I make adjustments? Or is there any conversation, anything we should we should be doing? Most of my clients, we've already had this conversation. But if you're on here and you haven't spoken to me, if you're uh, watching virtually, reach out and let us know what your what your questions are. And then again, we have a red line here on bonds. So so we had a little bit of a bull there in 2022 into 2023, but now we've flipped over. And so again, if if the uh, Fed, if inflation continues to uh, to to create, um, you know, higher prices, higher, you know, cost of living on everything, then they'll have no choice but to hold status. And if that happens, we will see that these bond holdings, and especially remember the the reinvestment risks these in uh, these companies, these financial institutions are under the same pressure. So then what ends up happening is people sell off, right? And as bonds come due. So we're seeing all this stuff sort of play out real time. That's why we see a red line. Um, if we're going to reinvest and, and we're still working, then I say, hey, just continue to, to buy into bonds because we want to buy when, when they're lower or when, they, when we have the opportunity to get a rate of return or yield off of our portfolio. So I know I spewed out a whole lot of information there. Um, it, it, it continues to be complex, but I just want you to know that that you know we didn't do this for the last couple months. Uh, it, it, the markets, there's a lot going on in the world, right? And that's a fact. And so you know, as we're you know things are sort of we're in, we're in uncharted waters and and political and you know social and governmental and you know just all the things that are going on. You know, I was talking to uh, uh, the group Saturday um, and, and just, you know, you'll hear me say this all the time. Hug your family. Make sure you stay close to your loved ones. Because, again, I'm just seeing, you know, people um, are, are getting ill. We're aging up. We're we're not as nimble. Um, and, you know, you just got to make sure that we stop and smell the roses. It, not everything's about money. Not everything's about a rate of return. It's about the journey. So enjoying that time with people that we love, I think, is really important. Um, but, you know, our recession uh, probability analytics tool is still showing that, you know, we're still above 50%. So just be careful, right, um, as we start to talk. 
that was my uh, my uh, sort of synopsis of uh, the last two months. But I do want to uh, say, hey, listen, I, I just sent out an email. I still got about six seats left at Rutgers. Again, it was a really good event. It's about 90 minutes. If you're um, uh, available, you want to come, uh, you know, learn about Social Security. You can make it. Uh, this is a complex arena. There, there's probably four areas of uber complex information. So security, uh, I would say taxes, right? Those are probably two. Um, Medicare and custodial care. Those four areas are just, to me, um, some of the most complex uh, contracts, legalese, design systems that I've seen in my career. And it's no wonder we get the deer in the headlight look or we go blah, 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 blah. So what we try and do is try and encourage you to not make decisions based on what your neighbor is doing. That you and everybody that wants to integrate Social Security as part of their retirement, integrate uh, or have concerns about longevity and what do we do to uh, reduce our exposure to taxes or long-term care events, things of that nature. Um, you know, how does Medicare work? Uh, you know, I had somebody uh, in the audience the other day say, hey, you know what, I got a great idea. I'm going to do a Roth conversion. I'll do this. I'll take my Social Security to pay the taxes. I'm brilliant. And I'm not here to, to, to say that I'm smarter than anybody, but he doesn't know what he doesn't know. And I pointed out, yeah, but be cautious because there's something called means testing on your Social Security and your Medicare Part B. This stuff is intricate. And if you don't know the rules, you can make irreversible mistakes or very costly mistakes. So make sure to reach out to us. Let us know if you want to come to this, send me an email, uh, you know, reach out to Caitlin, Keith, myself, uh, get on our calendar. Like I said, we have about six seats left, um, but it really was a cool venue. It's uh, nothing's going to be sold. It's all, you know, educational and it is in the South building. Um, so that's uh, what we're, we're showing. That's the building all the way to the right over here. Uh, you know, you see that L shape. So it, to the left is the North building to the right side of that, that square bottom floor parking, though, they change that. So it's over here all the way to the left. You get to walk a little bit. So get there a little bit early because we will start promptly at nine o'clock. So I want to thank everybody for coming. Uh, I hope you can make it. If uh, if you have any questions, reach out and thank you all again for attending.